Please join us now in the hymn of gathering. All creatures of God are king and king. Um, number 98, followed by our welcome and call to worship. Please remain seated. that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice in it. We have a lot of things growing now that we've got some rain, as was mentioned earlier. And uh, we come here. Uh, I welcome you. I'm Scott Job, and I'm your presider today. And the theme today is, what is your gospel message? What is your gospel message? Think about this as we go through the service and beyond the service. I will be doing the call to worship and invocation, followed by Cindy and Roger Maservi with the prayer for peace. Kim Job will be doing the focus moment on this uh, All Saints Day. Uh, I will bring the scripture reading, followed by Cheryl Norton, who will bring us our message. Misty Warren will bring the disciples' generous response. Earl Anderson will bring our past, us our pastoral prayer, and I will be doing this ending forth. So once again, I'd like to welcome everyone in this place. We are here to praise and to worship our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ. 
and it's a privilege to be able to do so. Our call to worship today is from Psalm 91 and 2. Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or even you had form formed the earth and the world, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. In the beginning, Jesus was there, our, our heavenly Father was there, and uh, the Holy Spirit was there in creating our world that we have the privilege to live in. Please uh, join us now in our centering hymn. It's Meet Me in a Holy Place, number 162. Please stand and remain standing for the invocation. Kim and I had the privilege of uh, this week going to the spiritual formation, this last weekend, spiritual formation and companioning program. And it's all about uh, making the space for Jesus and, uh, and uh, God, Holy Spirit, not only within ourselves, but uh, in relationship with others. And so let us pray. Loving and gracious God, you are our holy place. We have you everywhere, and we are thankful for that. We thank you for all your beauty and your grace and mercy and your love. We thank you that you are our steady guide, the one who leads us, the one who guides us, the one who keeps us and shelters us, the one who we just love to be with. We thank you and we praise you. And Ask that you would, your spirit would just uh, manifest itself in this worship service as it has already. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, you may be seated and uh, please uh, join Cindy and Roger Maserbi now in the prayer for peace.
Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with those who are willing to risk courageous love. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with a community who is dedicated to the pursuit of justice and equality. Let us walk with each other and let us shine your radiance into the darkness of the world. Let peace begin with me and let this be the moment where we walk a new path towards healing and reconciliation. Amen. Kim Job will now bring us our focus moment. Back the, this week on November 1st, and is in the Christian calendar All Saints Day. I know that's not something we have normally participated in, but uh, we're taking a little bit different look at it than some churches. Back when I was a kid, and we were still the Reorganized Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, my piano teacher, who was probably Catholic or Episcopal, asked what we meant by Latter-day Saints. She assumed that we had people that we had canonized in the past century. She had, that apparently was what saint meant to her. No, I explained to her, we considered that as Christians, we were all saints. And I'd like to point out that's the way the word is used in the New Testament in most translations. Today, we want to pause to begin our remembrance of friends and colleagues who in the past year now rest from their labors in God's loving embrace. But we do not simply want to remember people who have passed, but also to acknowledge those who walk with us here and now on our journey toward the peaceable kingdom. Now, please join us in the hymn for all saints, for all the saints, number 331, followed by an interactive exercise. And I bet you've been wondering what this post, big poster board's for. You'll find out after the hymn. 331. <laughs> Oh, 
as we pause for this moment of reflection, consider those in your life who have walked with you and helped shape your discipleship. They might have been parents, teachers, pastors, writers, or friends. Today, we celebrate spiritual companions from our past, the present, and those moving together with us into the future. On the sticky notes that Ralph and, I'm sorry, Kelly, Kelly I knew that, um, are going to give you, write down the names of those you are remembering. First names are fine. People on Zoom, post your name in the chat and Miranda will write it on a sticky note for you. And then Kelly and Ralph will put all our sticky notes on the poster and somebody please pick up Scott's and mine that I have stuck to the inside of the pew. Well, I guess I could go get it. chat, I see. Thank you very much. This will be displayed um, so you can see them later. Um, I'll take a picture and put it somewhere for those of you on Zoom. And um, please join us now in our hymn of reflection, Teach Me God to Wonder, number 176, 
followed by the scripture reading by Scott and today's message by Cheryl Norton. reading today comes from 1 Thessalonians 2, 1 through 8, and I'll be using the NRSVUE translation. You yourselves know, brothers and sisters, that our coming to you was not in vain, but though we had already suffered and been shamefully mistreated at Philippi, as you know, we had courage in God to declare to you the gospel of God in spite of the great opposition. For our appeal does not spring from deceit or impure motives or trickery, but just as we have been approved by God to be entrusted with the message of the gospel, even so we speak, not to please mortals, but to please God who tests our hearts as you know, and as God is our witness, we never came with words of flattery or with a pretext or for greed, nor did we seek praise from mortals, whether from you or from others, though we might have made demands as apostles of Christ. But we were gentle among you, like a nurse tenderly caring for her own children, so deeply do we care for you that we are determined to share with you not only the gospel of God, but also our own selves, because you have become very dear to us. And now we'll have Cheryl. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Even through my sniffles with having allergies, I heard some beautiful noise going on out there, and it really lifted my heart. And Scott, I want to thank you for our scripture reading today, reminding us the importance of our presence with each other, work of our faith, love, joy, and the patience of hope in Jesus Christ with the assurance of his return with all the saints. As I look out into the sanctuary today, 
and see those on Zoom. I see many faces of Jesus bringing me comfort, hope, and peace. So many of you have ministered to me within your individual divinely given gifts and talents that are amazing and unique. We are community with God. We celebrate this day remembering our relationships with each one who has been courageous and strong to minister to our deep, unuttered yearning of our soul. Though I may not preach like Richard, counsel and pray like Lila, or sing like Kathleen, I can make a joyful noise and serve with joy. Now, as in our scriptures we're talking, when Paul was remembering his first trip to Philippi, he wrote to the theologians and referred to the suffering and oppression that he and his team received. God gave him the courage to share the gospel through all the opposition. Paul spoke truth from the heart to please God, not human beings. They are his witnesses that he did not flatter them, seek personal gain, or try to promote his worth by their approval and praise. His conduct gives us an insight into the behaviors of others who sought fame and financial gain by evangelizing. In verse 7, Paul refers to himself, Salvanus and Timothy, Timothy, I'm sorry, as apostles. Now the Greek word for apostle meant one who is sent and was not a title or officer of the church. All who were sent by the Spirit of Christ to share the good news could be called apostles. Paul often used the term for outstanding men and women who were diligent, spirit-filled leaders among the Gentile churches. He recognized that he and his companions could have made demand for travel, philosophers and teachers, payment for their instruction, accommodations, and privileged treatment from their followers. Paul earned his living to avoid burdening the new churches with his needs. Now some philosophers taught by scolding and insulting of their students. Paul's team spoke gently, like a nurse caring for her children or baby. Later, Paul switches to the image of a father lovingly caring for his child. Now these images reinforce the idea that new disciples in Thessalonia are young in their faith and must continue to mature in the gospel. Paul was ready and willing to help them on that journey. Paul's ministry went beyond words to the ministry of presence. He and his team remained in Thessalonia long enough to get to know the people. Then they encouraged the witnesses to go to other places. They gave the gift of self and presence as they shared the gospel. Paul and his team ministered humbly and fearlessly, even when they were persecuted. They were guided by the Holy Spirit and witnessed for the glory of God, not humankind. In this day and age of televangelists and internet pre preachers, we often hear the gospel of pros uh, prosperity. God wants you to be rich 
or a message of guilt and shame. Be good or go to hell. In Paul's time, the philosophers would gather people to teach or debate, giving them money and status. In community of Christ, we gather to hear and share the good news that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believed on him shall have eternal life with the Father. At Shenandoah, we have the freedom to praise, to worship, to share our gifts and talents, to become the person whom God created us to be. If we will go and do. Then he can bless us beyond that which we may not completely comprehend at this time. We are promised by the creator who set time on its unending course that in the end all will be made new, where there will be no more crying or pain where loneliness and bitterness will be ended, where life itself will be forevermore. It is in this promise that we can find our greatest comfort, that in the end it is God's touch that will make all things right. You know, there's a song that we sing called, My Life Flows On in Endless Song. The last verse of that song touches my heart, and I would like to read it to you. I'll bear you the pain of hearing me sing. I'm not as brave as Earl is, okay? <laughs> okay, the peace of Christ makes fresh my head, hand, heart, I'm sorry, I can't even read, a fountain ever springing. All things are mine since I'm his. How can I keep from singing? No storm can shake my inmost calm while to that rock I'm clinging. Since love is Lord of heaven and earth, how can I keep from singing? God claims each of us, entices us from birth to death into life, one step at a time. Life goes on and the peace of Christ fills our hearts to overflowing. Our hope rises and the Spirit of God breathes in us and continues to move around us. How can we keep from singing? Now at this time, please join us in the uh, Disciples' Generous Response uh, led by Misty Warren. This is the third week of the generosity cycle. Today, the focus is again on the discover phase, which asks us to stop, look around, and discover God's many blessings. Money is powerful not only because of what we can do with it, but also because of what it can do to us. If not treated the right way, it can rule over our hearts. Jesus talked a lot about money, but he never once said that money is bad or that having a lot or just a little bit of money determines a person's worth. He simply says when we allow it to rule our hearts and actions, then we squeeze God out. As presiding bishop Ron Harmon reminded the church at the 2023 World Conference, our compelling vision continues to push us beyond the limits of our current imagination to consider how we are joining the movement of God's generous compassion in this moment and, and the next. 
It is what moves us to expand our true capacity in every dimension of our lives, to respond out of the deepest desire of our hearts. Our financial response to God's compassion and generosity is a reflection of our spiritual condition. When we're honest about where we use our money, we discover where our hearts reside. Saving money, controlling our spending, and consistently staying within our budget may seem like little things, but they help us align our heart with God and make room to join in God's compassion movement to redeem creation. As we offer our gifts to God today during this disciples' generous response, consider this question. How can I use my treasure to join the movement of God's generous compassion in the world? Doctrine and Covenants 165-2b states, Listen to the testimonies of those responding generously. Follow your soul's yearning to come home to God's grace and generosity. Let gratitude show you the way. Will the ushers please come forward? Pray with me. Dear Lord, as we stop, look, and discover your many blessings, may we give back generously. Amen. Now, will you please join us now in our hymn of renewal, Called by Christ to Love Each Other, number 577, followed by the pastoral prayer by Earl Anderson and sending forth by Scott Joe. <laughs>
join me in prayer, please? Our dear, kind, gracious Heavenly Father, as we come to a close of this service today, Lord, we praise you. We ask you to bless us, be with us in all the things that we do every Sunday through Saturday, and then we again meet on Sunday. Lord, we are so, we are so fortunate to have your son as our savior. And uh, Lord, we don't know what we would do without him because our goal is to share eternity with you. And we know that the only way to that is through your son. Lord, we ask that you be with all the Latter-day Saints in the community of Christ as they discern about the direction of the church and who will lead it. Lord, we know that the Holy Spirit will be involved, and we ask that the Holy Spirit will let us know how we should respond and guide the direction of the church into the future. So Lord, thank you for never giving up on us. For this we do praise you through the Son, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The sending forth today comes from Doctrine and Covenants 161, 1b. Be faithful to the spirit of restoration, mindful that it is a spirit of adventure, openness, and searching. Walk proudly and with a quickened step. Be a joyful people. Laugh and play and sing, embodying the hope and the freedom of the gospel. People on Zoom, uh, feel free to unmute yourselves and join in fellowship. There will be a mic up front so people in the congregation can talk to the people on Zoom. And uh, see you next week. God bless. One announcement I forgot. Uh, next Saturday, around 2 o'clock, uh, Ralph and Misty and I, and probably Vilma, she's feeling better, are going to come and do some window washing. So if there's anybody who would like to join us next Saturday, uh, the 4th, I believe, right? The day before communion service. Don't forget that one. Uh, please join us because uh, we want to spruce up the windows before conference. God bless you. Have a great day week hi everybody hello patty how are I you patrick you, patrick i am hi patrick hi carol <laughs> hi carol how are you doing fine thank you i'm miranda <laughs> We're going to be watching Bob Riley's wedding in a minute. Oh, I was, yeah, forgot about that. Hey, everybody. Hey, Scott. Scott. Yeah. Nice service. Well, praise the Lord. Thank you. Uh, I wanted to say something jokey like uh, you got away scot free, but uh, uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. It was, it was a nice service. Well, praise, praise God. I guess so. Hello, um, Earl. Hi, how you doing? I'm okay. Oh, well, that's uh, good, Patrick. What? Is Nancy doing okay? I'm a Connie. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Earl, how's your head? Uh, uh, part of it's missing. No, <laughs> it looks like it. Yeah, the spot. Oh, yeah, they, they got all of this cancer. So, good. I'll go in a year from now and see if there's any more up there. But 
it's definitely worth going in and getting checked. It sure is. Absolutely. I'm going to put that on Grateful News next week. Anthony's <laughs> <laughs> gone. Good to see you all. Good to see you too. Take Bye. care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, Bye. guys. Bye. I'm going to leave. I'll see you all next week. Okay, Patrick. Okay. Take care. I'll be there next week. Okay, good okay. deal. Thank you.